Ancient Egypt's solar cult achieved dominance under the pharaohs of the 5th dynasty, who carried out rituals related to it in sun temples dedicated to the deity Ra. In this week's Archaeology News, my lead story is about the discovery of another one of these four and a half thousand year old monuments, the remains of which were found whilst excavating a later sun temple. This week I also discussed the latest radiocarbon dating of the Louisiana mounds that shows they are the oldest man-made structures in North America. I look into the latest evidence for the Welsh Atlantis as well as new research into the Zanclean mega flood that refilled a salty and partially dry Mediterranean five million years ago. And if that's not enough, there's also a couple of interesting stories about cultural continuity in ancient Crete and the earliest migration into South America. Archaeologists find a sun temple dating to ancient Egypt's 5th dynasty. The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities recently announced the discovery of a sun temple 20 kilometers south of Cairo, which dates to between 2465 and 2323 BCE. Archaeologists were investigating the sun temple of Nusera at Abu Ghurab when they found the remains of this older building underneath it. The excavation is a partnership between the Interdisciplinary Sun Temples Project, led by archaeologist Dr. Massimiliano Nuzzolo at the Institute of Mediterranean and Oriental Culture of the Polish Academy of Sciences, and the archaeological expedition at the Sun Temple of Nusera in Abu Ghurab, which is co-directed by Dr. Nuzzolo and Professor Rosanna Pirelli from the University of Naples L'Orientale. The Sun Temple's project's goal is to gain a deeper understanding of the solar cult that predominated during the 5th dynasty. Based on texts, six solar temples are known to have existed in the area of Abu Ghurab between Giza and Saqqara. However, up until now, only two of these had been found, Nusera and Usukaf. Experts think the latest Sun Temple may be one of the lost four. The area of Abu Ghurab is close to the Abu Sir necropolis, where the 5th dynasty pharaohs built 14 pyramids. Only the remains of four can still be seen today, though. Investigations at the latest Sun Temple have found it measured at least 60 by 20 meters, was mostly constructed from mud brick walls and had a monumental limestone entrance. Traces of black and white plaster and red and blue paint have been found on the remains of these walls. The temple comprised storehouses, a courtyard containing large quartzite blocks and other rooms. Many artifacts were excavated from the site, including dozens of beer jars, some red-slipped pottery vessels, and clay seal impressions. One of the earliest seals is from the pharaoh Shepsis Kare, who may also have been the ruler behind the construction of this older temple. The building was ritually destroyed before a new sun temple was built on top of it by the pharaoh Nusera, reusing parts of the previous structure. A very small part of the older temple had been found in the 19th century by German archaeologists, but no further work had been done to investigate this structure until the recent excavation revealed these earlier deposits. Louisiana State University mounds are found to date back thousands of years. A recent paper in the American Journal of Science details the results of an investigation into the two seven meter high mounds located on the campus of the Louisiana State University. Researchers collected sediment core samples from the mounds which contained ash from burned plants and burned bones. These were then radiocarbon dated. The team found that construction at Mound B started around 11,000 years ago, with the site being abandoned 2,800 years later. That coincided with a huge drop in temperature which lasted 160 years. 700 years later, construction of Mound A began and at the same time, Mound B was remodeled. The radiocarbon dates mean these mounds are the oldest man-made structures in North America. The burnt material suggests rituals and ceremonies took place there. An astronomer also analyzed the alignments of the mounds and found that their crests are on an azimuth that's 8.5 degrees east of true north. 6,000 years ago, when both mounds were in use, the star Arcturus would rise 8.5 degrees east of north, so it's possible the mounds were purposefully aligned with it. Welsh Atlantis immortalized in legends may have been real. 
For around 800 years, a Welsh legend has told the story of a lost kingdom known as Cantre Gwaelod, which has been described as a fertile stretch of land that used to exist in Cardigan Bay. This low-lying kingdom, ruled by two princes, supposedly had an embankment to hold the sea back and was regularly drained of floodwaters. However, it eventually sunk beneath the sea. Up until now, no evidence had been found to prove the veracity of the legend. However, two academics, Simon Haslett, honorary professor of physical geography at Swansea University, and David Willis, Jesus Professor of Celtic at the University of Oxford, have found proof the land may have existed by studying a medieval map. The Goth map kept at the University of Oxford's Bodleian Library dates back to the mid-13th century and shows two islands off the Ceredigion coast that no longer exist. It's possible that floods, erosion and storms cause them to be lost, and it's the memories of such events that are immortalised in the myth of Cantre Gwaelod. The research has been published in the journal Atlantic Geoscience. DNA study finds evidence for human habitation in South America 18,000 years ago. Researchers have used DNA analysis to predict when humans are likely to have traveled to South America. The general consensus amongst scientists is that people reached North America via a land bridge from Siberia between 14,000 and 17,000 years ago before traveling south. This new study takes the date further back to 18,000 years ago. The researchers took tissue samples from 13 people in Argentina who were thought to be descended from an ancient group of migrants. De nuevo phylogenetic trees were then constructed where lengths of the branches corresponded with the amount of single nucleotide polymorphisms from which a timeline could be determined. This data was then compared to 80 people showing the same Q haplogroup in Eurasia and other regions. The researchers calculated that for the Y chromosomes of the people in Argentina to have those particular characteristics, they must have been present in the region for 18,000 years. The study also found that many lineages were lost during the Younger Dryas period. Further research carried out into the Zanclian megaflood. New research at the Australian National University has looked further into the Zanclian megaflood that took place in the Mediterranean five million years ago. The megaflood hypothesis was first developed in 2009 by Spanish geophysicist Daniel Garcia Castellanos. Around 6 million years ago, due to plate tectonics, the Mediterranean was cut off from the Atlantic, causing what's known as the Mycenaean salinity crisis, leaving the Mediterranean basin partly dry and containing bodies of salt water which killed off marine life. At that time, the Mediterranean was split into the eastern and western basins. Slowly, water started filtering back through until the land separating the Mediterranean and Atlantic was breached, causing the Zanclian megaflood, which refilled the Mediterranean. The new research suggests that it took 26,000 years for the salt to filter out of the Mediterranean into the Atlantic Ocean, making the sea once again habitable for marine life. And it was the western basin which flooded first, before the land barrier to the east was breached, causing a huge waterfall into the eastern basin. It's thought that the flood was so huge that as the Mediterranean filled back up, the global sea level was reduced by around 9 metres. New study analyses societal change in ancient Crete via obsidian characterization. In the mid-2nd millennium BCE, a major societal transformation took place on the island of Crete, driving changes in language, economics, iconography and burial customs. Based on various evidence, scholars think these changes can be explained by the takeover of the Minoan culture by the Mycenaeans from mainland Greece. A recent study in the journal PLOS One used obsidian characterization to see if the use of raw materials on Crete during that period might offer a different explanation as to what took place there. The researchers analysed obsidian artefacts from the site known as Courtier Nu at Malia. The 750 metre squared complex was built around a courtyard and contains evidence for ceremonial activities as well as those of everyday life such as textile production, metalworking and cooking. The results of the study found evidence for cultural continuity at Malia in terms of the way in which obsidian was sourced and worked. Any changes that took place might be explained by elites copying Mycenaean styles or a small group of foreigners taking control of the indigenous population, the latter continuing in much the same way as they had before. 
This is a very rudimentary summary of what's a very complicated scientific paper. So if you'd like to read more, the article is freely accessible and detailed in the description below. That's it for the news this week. Let's hope some more lost sun temples come to light. Strangely, for what was a dominant and pervasive cult, Egyptologists do not know a lot about the rituals related to Ra. I've put a link to the Sun Temples project below as well, which has lots of interesting information on the work being done to find out more about these practices during the Fifth Dynasty. The beer jars seem to be a bit of a clue though, in my opinion. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Please hit the like button and leave me a comment. Come and find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. The link to my Patreon is in the description below. Also take a look at my website for more information on the sites I visit, the articles I write for magazines, and the podcasts I participate in. It's megalithhunter.com.